Welcome back. My name is Victoria and you're watching Plantastics. Today we're going to be talking about INSV specifically as it relates and presents itself in African violets. So INSV is an acronym for the Impatient Necrotic Spot Virus and it does look somewhat similar to the tomato wilting virus but some test from your local extension agency will be able to you know basically tell you this is INSV. So INSV is spread by western flower thrips and the thrip once it feeds in as little as 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes can ingest that sap that's infected and they will be able to serve as a vector for that virus. So they, once they feed on that one infected plant, every plant that they feed on, they are going to potentially infect. So it's kind of serious. Um, so that's, that's, that's thrips, Western flower thrips. They're the little black ones, but they can be spread by any thrips. But African violets specifically are gonna be affected generally by that one type. So what can the infection look like? So. It can be spots, it can be deformed leaves, it can be necrotic areas, it can be ring spots, it can be mosaic patterns, modeling, distortion of new growth, stunted growth, and plant death. Some plants will appear asymptomatic until they are so infected by the virus that they show symptoms. So. Once, unlike, so let's say we catch a virus like the flu or COVID. So we get super sick or we're asymptomatic. And then once we're done, we're fine. We're not going to be carriers for that virus anymore. Well, with INSV, once that plant has it, it's going to have it forever. And the only way, there is no way to cure a violet with INSV. You have to destroy it and throw it away. That's the only thing you can do. Same with people that have crops. I've spent some time looking into that because there weren't any videos on YouTube about INSV, which is one of the reasons why I'm making this. So it can be a resource for people because if you're like me, I'd never heard of it before, but it can, it, it can wipe out crops. So it's not just something that can affect your house plants. Like in California, I watched like a, um, presentation where they were talking about it and how they had issues because this um, scientist basically was misdiagnosing it as something else so they didn't destroy the plants they thought it was fertilizer burn or something like that and it continued to spread so if you have an INSV infected violet you've got to destroy it and some ways to destroy it are with are with like 90 percent alcohol or bleach so Take the plant, pour it into a bag or a bucket, and pour that pour either one of those things in there. I honestly wouldn't mix them. 90% alcohol, specifically, not 70%. And um, then you can bag it up and throw it away. You're not going to want to compost it. You're not going to want to like just throw it out because then if there are thrips on there, they can go and they can spread to other plants because it doesn't just affect African violets. Um, so. If you want to find testing, go to www.npdn.org. They are going to show a big map and you can basically just click on your state and find your local extension office. That's basically what I did. Um, so, you know that INSV, once it infects a plant, it's, it's infected forever, like gone. Cut your losses, get rid of the plant, okay? Just trust me. If you have a positive INSV test, like... You can keep it in a Ziploc bag, mourn it, especially if it's something from somebody that like it's super sentimental, but you just need to get rid of it because it's not going to bounce back. It's not like you can put some special essential oils on it and it's going to go away. Like that's just not how, how it works. Hello, it's future me and I just realized I forgot to add something in here. So if you take a leaf from an African violet and propagate it, you know, through leaf propagation or through flower, really any part of the plant that you use to propagate, any suckers, those plants will have the same sap as the mother plant. And that means that they will also carry the virus. So any propagations from an INSV infected violet will also be infected, which is something very important that I wanted y'all to know. So back to the other Victoria. So whenever 
you get your plants in. So let's say, let's let's back up. Let's back up. Okay, so you are looking to buy African violets. Go online and look at forums for the sellers that you're interested in. Because I would have never known what INSV was if it wasn't for an online forum. Because everybody was testing their violets from this one, vela, one vendor and they were getting positive results. Especially with chimeras. Like I think everyone that purchased a chimera from Violet Barn had a positive INSV result. Which is kind of like, like almost impressive but not like in a great way. Like in a really bad way. Um... So look up the vendor that you're looking to buy from. See if there is a history, if there's anybody or a bunch of people saying that they've got an INS fee because you have nothing to gain unless you're another greenhouse trying to outcompete someone else to say that your plant had, has INS fee. Because when you find out you have INS fee, it's super stressful because you're worried do other plants have it. Also, depending on how long ago you purchased that plant, the seller may or may not refund you, even if you send them positive INSV results from your extension office. So, um, all those are factors. Find credible people that aren't historically sending off plants with INSV, whether they knew it or not, and further, whether they cared or not, once they knew. So, pick a vendor that is going to stand by their plants and give you some kind of a guarantee that they don't have INSV because you want your your money back if you get INSV because let me tell you those tests are expensive you potentially are going to spend as much on testing as you did on your order I spent 50 60 dollars on my order from Violent Barn and three out of the five I tested plus shipping for the samples and basically I spent like $45, almost as much as the order. But had I tested all the violets that came with that order, which there were five violets, that would have been $55, $60. So you want your money back because at least then you're at zero. Like, you know, otherwise you're spending $100 getting African violets, testing them, and you're just at a loss of $100. So, um... Keep that in mind. And something else is that, yeah, so you've, you've purchased from this reputable seller. You're going to next quarantine them. So put them in a place where you've had violets that did well. You don't want to have problems with, like, lighting or water. Um, you want to have them in a place that's stable, and you want to have them in, like, Ziploc bags or, like, a container of some kind. So that way, if they do have INSV and you do have thrips, there's no way it can be spread to your other plants. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to isolate. So then every two or three days, whatever, you can set some time for yourself. You're going to look at them. You're going to look for certain things and I'm going to tell you what those things are. You're going to look for those, those spots, those deformed leaves. If the crown is super bunched together and the leaves are just not coming out or if the leaves are super deformed looking, that's going to be a symptom that this plant may, you may suspect that it has INSV. So you're going to take this order, you're going to watch it. You're going to watch it before you reintroduce or you introduce it to the rest of your plants. That's the most important thing because once you find out you don't want to have had those plants out because it's very easier, it's a lot easier to be proactive than reactive whenever you have something like this happen. Because if you're taking steps before you know or not know, then it's a lot easier because you can't go back in time and isolate these plants. You can only go forward with whatever, whatever happens. So what you're going to do is you're going to reach out if you suspect on that link that I gave you. And you're going to find your local extension office. So, depending on your area, they may charge a certain amount for INSV testing. For my extension office, they charged me $10, $10 per plant. So, I sent two leaves because they needed a minimum of 115 grams of plant like tissue to test. So, I sent them two leaves. I put them basically in... 
like tissue paper or a paper towel and then I put them in a Ziploc bag and then I labeled them the name of the variety. So that way when they tested it, they would send results back that said K is unbridled, negative or positive. And that's just really important so that way you don't get any varieties mixed up because you don't want to throw away an INSV negative when it was really positive. So you can have all of these different things. So we're going to look at a few photos basically of what it can look like. So if you just give me a second, I am going to find the photos that I've collected and people pretty much have been posting these and I did get permission from the owners of the photos. We're going to start with the ones that I tested myself. So the three that I tested were Buckeye, Petty Larceny, K's Unbridled, and A.E. Candy. So, A.E. Candy was super just compact. The leaves just looked anemic. So, this is one of the reasons why I continued to isolate this variety. So, I kept them all isolated for two weeks. I say keep them isolated for a month. You do your best judgment. I had just repotted mine, and it was very obvious that these three needed to continue to be quarantined and then as it continued to be they continued to be isolated i knew that they were suspect and i needed to test them so ae candy continued in isolation because it had these super teeny tiny leaves um k's unbridled had dead spots on the leaves um it ended up not being positive AE Candy was positive. It was positive for INSV. They sent me the results. It took them like two or three days and um, they sent them to me. K's Unbridled was negative. Buckeye Petty Larceny. So the reason why I suspected this one was because it had unique veining. So I'm going to be honest with y'all. I had never noticed purple veining in any of my African violets prior to seeing this plant. And I understand that certain varieties, you know, they're unique, they've got different characteristics, but this was odd. It was like, I don't know if you've seen the movies where someone turns into a villain, but like all their veins start turning like funny colors. I think it's the Spider-Man movie. I'm not sure. But anyways, this just looked really odd to me and I hope that you're able to see it in the photos. Um, also, the, the leaves themselves are a weird color, and this is not from sunburn or anything like that. So the two that I kept and didn't isolate were Ma's Top Base and Ma's Arctic Sky. And Ma's Top ba Base was basically, um, it was growing new leaves. The leaves were nice, symmetrical. The crown looked normal, so I didn't bother with isolating or testing this one. Ma's Arctic Sky looked healthy. It was, you know, will negate blooms. Blooms don't mean if the plant is healthy or not because two of my INSV positives did have blooms and are currently blooming because I just want to see how long it takes for them to die, you know, research and stuff. Also, they're blooming and the plant pathologist really wanted to see what they were going to look like because he said they're going to look deformed and I couldn't help it. I was super curious, so I wanted to see what they look like. So, I could send him a picture because he requested it. So Ma's Arctic Sky looks super normal. So I was on the subreddit r slash African Violets and I did get permission from these people to use their photos for educational purposes. So Funumbly Girl, you can see it's got an INSV positive test strip there. Um, so this plant does have INSV. And it has these super compact, deformed looking leaves. They just don't look healthy. They don't look normal. And it'll be even more obvious with the next plant I'm going to show you, um, Harmony's Little Stinker. So here we've got these unique um, like patterns on the leaves. So these patterns um, aren't a sign of INSV, that's just this variety. But you can see that the leaves never formed correctly. They're super small. They just look like they've been squeezed of all their life, if that makes any sense. 
And then next, you can see kind of some discoloration similar to the buckeye that I had that tested positive. So this um, haloing of the leaves isn't technically a symptom. I have an African violet that I've had forever that's a no ID that has haloed leaves. It's not fertilizer, it's not INSV, so sometimes that's not a sign of INSV, but looking in the middle how dark that leaf is, that's just something you don't normally see. And this one did end up testing positive. So the next one is Moss Taffy Stripe. And once again, you can see that crown is super tight. It just looks choked off. And um, you can almost see, I guess, w at what point it got infected or started showing symptoms because the older leaves looked fine, you know. And then here is Rob's Mirabuka. And you can see, once again, it's just so small and choked off. The growth is so stunted. And in the last picture here, um, this is an unknown variety, but this is what they mean when they say necrotic spots or necrotic areas. The leaf is dying. It looks like it's been sunburnt and died or something like that, but it is a symptom of the INSV. So I hope that just by looking, looking at these photos, you're able to kind of get an idea of what INSV can present itself as. So if you have any plants that look like these, they're showing stunted growth. They've got necrotic spots on the leaves. So what you're going to do is you're going to reach out to your extension agency, find out as much as you can about how they want their samples. They may want them to be bagged a certain way. You just want to make their job easier by making sure that you're packaging everything and labeling it for them to be able to test. So I sent my stuff in the mail on a Thursday. And obviously it was USPS, so over the weekend they weren't able to process it or anything, but I got my results on Wednesday. And I just remember being like so shocked um, and just like immediately being like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to tell people like I have INSV positive as well. So what do you do? So you've, you've gotten your results back and they're positive. So I would reach out to the seller or the vendor where you got that plant from you need to give them the benefit of the doubt um, and you need to send them the results. You can get your extension office to email them or you can forward the email that they send you or take pictures of the mail. That You basically just want to make sure that they have the results so they're not just taking your word for it. Like You have proof that someone tested these and these are the results that they have and these are the results that they stand by. Because, quite frankly, they're going to be more likely to believe someone with a PhD in biology or plant pathology than you doing an at-home test. That's my opinion. I think if you have an INSV positive, whether it's an at-home test or an extension office or agency, they should take those seriously and give you a refund. So, I would notify the seller and then I would also ask for a refund for whichever um, African violets tested positive. So, now... They're on notice. They know that they have plants with INSV. What they do from there is up to them. You have contained the outbreak, you have isolated, you have followed all the steps. And now once you've got this positive plant, what you're gonna do is you're gonna destroy it. I would reach out to your extension agency and um, basically see what they recommend. They basically told me do not compost it. They told me I could bury it or just throw it in a Ziploc bag and throw it away. And they also advised that I do, I can't remember the parts that they recommended, but they told me to use bleach and water to clean the pots because I really love those self-wicking pots um, pretty much. And that's what they told me to do to destroy the plants. So I talked about thrip spreading the virus and I can't remember if I told you about how dirty tools can also spread the virus. So let's say I'm using some shears. You're going to use rub and alcohol 90%, not 70%. Um, and you're going to rub both sides of that, those scissors, or if you're using an X-Acto knife, you're going to do that. Or if you have like, I've got these 24 inch tweezers that I use when I'm pruning. I just pinch and twist when I have older leaves that need to be removed. Um, those. So basically in between plants you need to disinfect that because the transfer from sap to sap, plant to plant, 
is going to spread the virus. So it's super, super like, you know, there's, I have a teacher and they always say only the paranoid will survive. This isn't paranoia. This is literally just best practice. But um, taking these extra steps will prevent you from having INSV being spread if you should ever have it. So um, I'd be curious to know what your experiences have been. I don't know if I said this, but I ordered five plants and I, I had three that were suspect. And out of those three, I had two that were INSV positive and they were from that Violet Barn unboxing. So INSV, they have plants that are infected with INSV and they sent me this email as a response, basically stating that, and it was a boilerplate, like they just sent that apparently to everyone. At the time, they were sending a completely, before, a week before that, they were sending a completely different email basically being like, well, we don't know. Well, um, when I went to fill out my application for the testing, I put their mailing address that was on their website, Violet Barnes, and I also used their comments, um, email address, basically. So when I got the results in an email from my extension center, they also got a copy of my results. So there was no potential for me to, you know, alter it. It didn't come to me and then go to them. It went from the extension agency straight to them. So like I said, you can forward the results to the seller, but I feel like you just need to let them know because if they don't know, it gives them an opportunity to fix it. It gives them an opportunity to apologize and you've started that, opened that line of communication. What they do from there is on them because you've done your part. So, um, INSV, let me know some symptoms that you've noticed. Let me know if this video um, basically taught you something new. Like I said, these are basically things that I was able to research. And the African Violet Association of America recently sent out several articles in their winter issue. So, I would highly suggest you read those if you can and um, try to try to find out more, you know, just more about it because this is a really great starting point because you're going to learn more than you, you initially had, but I strongly encourage you to not use this video as your only source of information for INSV. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this and if you're into plant tutorials and just information generally, you can subscribe and see more of my videos. Until then, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.